Tonight, Google loses in court to Oracle. The iPhone 6 could come early. And what are Apple's plans for Beats? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 84 for Friday, May 9th, 2014. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right into the tech feed. Earlier today, a federal court ruled that Google has to pay Oracle for its use of the Java API in Android. If the ruling stands, it sets a precedent that software companies own copyright over their APIs, which is short for Application Programming Interface, and allows programs to communicate with each other. The new standard is potentially very bad news for software developers that want to build on top of APIs that are no longer free to use. In this particular case, Google built the Android OS on top of a modified version of Java, but kept Java's API to make it easier for programmers to write for Android. In May of 2012, a district court ruled in favor of Google having free access to Oracle's API, Oracle appealed the ruling and, as of today, was successful. The next step, Supreme Court. We'll get to the Apple Beats story in just a few, but how about an Apple rumor first? Taiwan's Economic Daily News is citing unidentified supply chain sources that say the company will unveil its next iPhone in August, one month earlier than expected, based on previous, previous years. Uh, more specifically, a 4.7-inch screen version of the iPhone 6 will reach stores in August, and then a 5.5 or 5.6-inch model will be released in September in line with Apple's regular iPhone cycle. Between the two models, the Economic Daily News reports 80 million iPhone 6 handsets will be produced this year. Unsurprisingly, Apple had no comment. On that note, three iPhone 6 dummies are making the rounds and, if real, appear to be the 4.7-inch display models shown in three colors, gold, space gray, and silver. Also making the rounds is the possibility that the name iPad Air will carry on to the iPhone line and replace iPhone 6. But unlike the naming conventions for Apple's laptop line, without an iPhone Pro, the iPhone Air would be the top of the line iPhone, much like the iPad Air. In for sure Apple news, Ari Partinen, a uh, senior Lumia engineer who helped develop Nokia's impressive PureView camera technology announced today via Twitter that he's leaving to join Apple. Uh, Partinen's team was responsible for developing Lumia's 42 megapixel pure view camera technology. Netflix is raising its subscription price a little bit. New UK customers will pay an extra pound per month above what current subscribers pay. The rest of Europe's prices will increase by one euro. In United States, new customers will pay $8.99. That's one dollar more. I even got the email this morning uh, that that would be happening. However, current Netflix subscribers won't have to pay anything extra for 24 months. Last month, when it announced earnings for its quarter, CEO Reed Hastings said that most of the revenue gains resulting from the higher prices would help to fund Netflix's budget for content and explained, quote, if we want to continue to expand, we have to eventually increase prices a little bit, end quote. Netflix will also offer a more modest streaming package available at the old price, which will only stream in standard definition and to only one screen at a time, while premium subscribers can stream to four screens in Super HD. And speaking of House of Cards in real life, the Federal Election Commission has accepted a request by a political action committee called Make Your Laws to accept Bitcoin donations up to $100. As with stocks, the FEC said the donated Bitcoins must be converted into dollars and deposited into campaign accounts before they can be spent. However, since Bitcoins aren't traceable, Public interest group Public Citizen says this is worrisome. The organization's government affairs lobbyist Craig Holman told, tells uh, VentureBeat Bitcoins shouldn't have been allowed in the first place because they are anonymous and difficult to track. Now that the Heartbleed frenzy has died down, where are we in terms of security? Robert Graham of Errata Security writes in a blog post today that he scanned the Internet via port 443. And that while a month ago there were 600,000 vulnerable systems, today there are still around 300,000 systems still vulnerable to Heartbleed. He noted these numbers are only port 443, not other SSL ports like SMTP ports and just IPv4 addresses that provide different results than DNS domain names. Even so, it's an indicator that much work is yet to be done. Now coming up, why a hosting provider is throttling down the FCC's internet connection, but first, I want to welcome to the show Yanko Rutgers, senior writer at Gigahome. Welcome to the show. 
Glad to be here. Awesome. It's good to have you here. Now, news began to break yesterday that Apple had an interest in buying the premium headphone brand Beats Electronics along with its Beats music streaming service. And a deal hasn't yet been finalized. Nothing is set in stone at the moment. But this story, obviously, it's, it has a lot of people talking. Uh, first, Yonko, you wrote an article today about what might, you know, what might a company like Apple stand to gain from buying a company like like Beats Electronics. Uh, do you think this is going to be more of a technology play, or as Harry McCracken puts it over at Time, could this be more about Apple enveloping a brain trust of talented, connected music industry players into their current team? I kind of have a feeling if Apple just wanted people, they could get people a little bit cheaper than that. Yeah. I think part of it is definitely that they also want to have the headphones. And I'm wearing my big headphones, which are not Beats, but I put them on for the show here. <laughs> um, but, I mean, Apple is in a business traditionally where they like head hardware with big margins, with large margins. And that's exactly what Beats is doing. So that's a good match already. And then there's obviously the music service, Beats Music, that launched earlier this year. And Apple has been pretty bad at pulling off services in the past uh, with, with Mobile Me and uh, even uh, the iTunes match stuff or the iTunes radio stuff, it's all never worked out that well. And they don't have a music subscription service right. to be playing. They don't have an answer to Spotify. The world is music to subscription music and Apple is there still with digital downloads and they don't quite know what to do about it. So I think that's a big motivator for it. Yeah. Now, speaking of Spotify, Om Malik, um, you know Om, uh, wrote a fantastic piece about the developments of this story. And he states that this is likely all about battling successful streaming services like Spotify, like you said. Does that sound right in your opinion? Uh, if that's the case, why would Apple target Beats Electronics for the buyout and not simply go after a company like Spotify, which undoubtedly has a larger subscriber base, arguably has better branding and online streaming music? Why Beats? Well, I think Spotify would have been also a bit more expensive, mm -hmm. but it's also probably a little bit of thinking that Apple thinks that they can ramp this up quickly with their built-in user base because they have building relationships with what's the latest number, how many hundred millions of credit card numbers do they already have? And they sell all this hardware. If they bundle the service with that, they can quickly write, um, get to a whole lot more users. Spotify is currently... Uh, about 10 million paying subscribers, or they're reaching 10 million paying subscribers sometime this year. Apparently, Apple thinks they can get this, get that quicker uh, on the cheap by buying Beats. Gotcha. Now, some are saying that this signals a change in Apple's trend-setting influence in these kinds of markets. Does the possibility of Apple considering a purchase of such a notable company for its brand and its smarts signal that uh, Apple is having a harder time innovating on its own, or would you say this is business as usual? It's definitely a new way of doing business for Apple because they don't really do these big transactions. Uh, they tend to just buy smaller teams and to integrate them and then build their own services. This is something new. But again, it seems also like right now is the time to spend billions of dollars on anything, right? So mm -hmm. uh, Google buys a thermostat. Other people got by drone companies and uh, Facebook bought Oculus Rift. And nobody really expected any of these deals. Well, maybe we all thought they would get bought eventually, but we didn't quite expect it that would be picked up that quickly and for that much money. So it seems to be in tune with that. And everybody seems to be rushing onto these companies. And I actually expect that this is going to continue also in the music space. And now that Apple has bought Beats, I kind of think there's going to be some pressure on Spotify, actually, because they wanted to go public this year. They wanted to IPO. And now if uh, potential investors look at this company and say, well, they're going to have a competitor with as deep pockets as Apple, then they might not want to invest in that. And maybe Spotify is going to get cold feet and say, oh, maybe we should just have to sell it after all. Yeah, that's a really good point. Now, we may recall that, you know, three years ago, another smartphone brand, HTC, bought a majority stake in Beats Electronics and implemented Beats technology into many of their top-of-the-line smartphones in an attempt to make their hardware more appealing to consumers. And ultimately, that plan didn't pan out so well for either company. HTC ended up selling off its remaining stake in Beats last September. How are Apple's intentions, if this is true, to buy Beats different from HTC's approach? And do you see a better outcome this time around? Well, I think they're very different companies. HTC yeah. was already kind of struggling. They were hoping if we just slap this popular logo on our phones and put some like a little algorithm that makes the bass sound deeper into the phones, then it's going to save us from from our uh, 
whatever is going to wait for SGC mm -hmm. next, I guess. Uh, Apple is it's a much more successful company, obviously, and they have the stores. They already know what kind of hardware is selling in these stores. And as somebody noticed yesterday, they already sell these these headphones, so they also know quite a bit about Beats business. Uh, so from there, it seems to be a no, more natural match there. Um, I th also think Beats is at a different point now because they are starting to go into the services business. They didn't have the music service when HTC was working with them. Or I think they were starting to look into it early on, but then decided maybe HTC is not the best partner for it. I think it's a better match. It still doesn't mean that Apple can't mess this up in the end when it comes to services. But I think... Uh, both companies could get more of this. Sure. I mean, we all re remember Ping and that uh, as far as an Apple service, that quite didn't pan out so hot. So uh, it's not it's not completely unquestionable that it couldn't happen. But I think I think you're absolutely right there. Uh, and finally, as I said at the top, this is all unconfirmed at the moment. As far as we know, for sure, no deal is imminent. Everyone's weighing in, though, to wage their bets on whether this will come to pass or not. Uh, what's your opinion? Do you think this is going to happen or is it just fantasy? Quite a few reports indicating that the deal is advanced. And there's even already Dr. Dre is celebrating on YouTube or on Facebook. I don't know if you saw the yeah, video. Yeah, I saw the video. Um, yeah. Which is kind of interesting, kind of fun. A little bit of a different way to make an announcement of an investment, sure. I guess. Um, <laughs> so it seems like this is very advanced. Obviously, these things can fall through at any point, but it seems it's very advanced. And regardless of this, I think even if this falls through, something is going to happen in the music space and with this advancing that far everybody is not going to rush to the to the to I, I don't to, to count their money and see how much they can spend on other services and i think in the next couple of months we're going to see other companies getting bought and everywhere trying to rush in this space and trying to compete uh, for digital music subscribers. And so come next year, digital music is going to look very different. And a lot of the service that we know by now may be gone or maybe acquired or maybe working with somebody else. Right. I think you're absolutely right. Yanko, I want to thank you for coming on to Tech News tonight to discuss the future of Apple and Beats. It's awesome having you on. Uh, sure, thanks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Where can people follow you and your work online? Obviously, you can always go to gigaohm, gigaohm.com, where I write every day and, and my all my colleagues write smart and fun stuff every day. But I, you can also find me on Twitter and on Google+. Plus. I'm active on both services. Just Google me, Yanko Rutgers. And I know that's kind of a mouthful of people. <laughs> but just take uh, whatever I see in the law third, I guess. Yeah, you, right. can, you can find this name right here. Uh, put it in Google and you're going to find me and, and you can get in touch with me uh, on these services. Right on. Thanks again, Yanko. Take care. All right, and finally, in a stroke of irony, web hosting service NeoCities.org has throttled the FCC's internet access to 28.8 kilobit per second dial-up speeds as part of a net neutrality protest. NeoCities creator Kyle Drake wrote in a blog post today that the FCC's controversial proposals, which would allow ISPs to create internet fast lanes for large corporations that can afford to pay, are Idiotic and insane, his words. Uh, he also criticized FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler as a bonehead and a cable industry hand-picked lobbyist. Drake didn't reveal his source for the FCC IP range, but list was uploaded on Hacker News. And NeoCities has also posted the code used on its GitHub page. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash tn2 and write us at tn2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific. It's 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.